Modern board games are home to some of our favorite universes and intellectual properties like Harry Potter, Marvel, and Star Wars. In this video, I'll be going through seven of my favorite games that incorporate IPs. First up, we have Marvel United. Now this is a cooperative game for one to four players where you're taking control of a superhero set in the Marvel Universe and you're working together to defeat thugs, to save civilians, and destroy an evil villain. Now I like Marvel United for a number of reasons. The first is that this game has a lot of content packed into the core box. You're gonna have seven different heroes as well as three different villains to face off against. There is a lot of variability in the setup. You have different locations that you're gonna shuffle and set around the board. So the play area is gonna be different most times you play this game. But the biggest reason I like this is the accessibility. The rules overhead in this game is very minimal. I feel like it's super easy to pick up and play and just get to the table. You can play this with your kids, your younger sibling, your parents, and everyone's gonna be able to understand this and have a good time. And that's why Marvel United is my first pick. Next up we have Harry Potter Defense Against the Dark Arts, a two-player versus game where players are taking control of a wizard from one of their favorite houses in the Harry Potter universe, and you are working to knock out your opponent three times. Now this is not literally unless you hate your friends. Now each player is gonna start the game with the same or very, very similar set of cards, and throughout the course of the game you're gonna be buying new items, partnering with new allies and learning new spells in order to defeat your opponent. Now, this game is very simple and straightforward, and I really like that about this game. I feel like the design is just really easy for anyone to wrap their head around. You are casting spells, trying to knock out your opponent. You also have items that might do things like allow you to draw cards or to heal up. And then of course you have iconic allies like Harry Potter, Draco Malfoy, Snape, and so on. And that just adds a lot to the immersion in the game. It is a fairly lightweight deck builder, but it does achieve that kind of immersion that I'm looking for when I wanna play something in the Harry Potter universe. And it's just overall very accessible and easy to learn. And that's why I love this game so much. If you want something a little more complex, a little more strategy involved than Harry Potter, then I recommend Star Wars, the deck building game. Now in this two player versus game, you're taking control of either the Empire or the Rebellion, and you are working to defeat your opponent's bases. As soon as you defeat four of those bases, you are the winner. And in this game, what I really, really like about it is the Galaxy Row. Now this is kind of the shop where you're able to recruit new units and new allies, and it's gonna be filled with uh, units of your faction, unit of your opponent's faction, as well as neutral units. Whenever it's a unit of your faction or a neutral unit, you're able to buy it if you have the resources and add it to your deck. However, whenever you see an opponent's unit, you're actually able to, instead of buying it, you can defeat it if you have enough attack power. If you can successfully defeat it within your turn, it's going to net you rewards, things like resources to purchase units later on down the road, or force, which is going to potentially strengthen cards that you have in your deck. I love that about this game. I feel like the tension is through the roof, especially for like kind of a middleweight uh, deck builder. You know, the last thing I want to see as the rebellion is I end my turn, refill the shop, and I see Darth Vader come out. That is terrible, and that's happened to me more often than I would like to admit. And it just makes this game so much fun. I feel like for it being a very, uh, you know, modestly priced game, there's a lot of strategy, a lot of depth, and a lot of tension packed into this. And that's why this is my number three pick. Next up, we have my favorite Marvel game, and this is Marvel Champions, a cooperative game for one to four players where you're taking control of your favorite superhero and you're working to defeat a villain and make sure their scheme does not come to fruition. Now, I've talked about Marvel several times, or Marvel Champions, excuse me, uh, on the channel. It's no secret that I really enjoy this game. I love Marvel Champions because I feel like, at least from all the Marvel games I've played, 
The theme comes out so well in this game, a lot more than all the others. I really, really feel like I am that superhero. You know, each hero is gonna have their own deck of cards. It's not a deck builder, it's more of a deck construction game. And you're really able to modify and refine your deck as perfectly or as crazy as you want. Now the game does offer four different aspects is what they call them. So you have leadership, you have justice, you have protection, and then you have aggression. And as the names suggest, they're going to wildly change up your deck. Now, if you want, for example, Spider-Man, you might go full aggression for his aspect, and the majority of your cards are going to be very offensive. Now, if I'm playing Black Panther or maybe, uh, uh, what's his face? Captain America, I would probably go protection. And a lot of my cards are gonna be very defensive focused. Uh, you could also go leadership with Captain America, which is very fitting as well. All in all, I just love that customization. I feel like the theme comes out very well in this game. There's also an insane amount of content similar to Marvel United. So you kind of have to watch your wallet when you get into this one. But even the core set alone has a lot of content packed in there. And it's just so good. If you're a fan of Marvel, you have to try Marvel Champions. It's amazing. I couldn't make this list without including a Dune game, and my vote goes to Dune Imperium Uprising, a versus game for one to six players, where you are taking control of an iconic character set in the Dune universe, and you are working to control the spice. Now, how you're actually gonna win the game is by getting 10 victory points, and you can get these a number of ways. You can increase your reputation with the various factions. You can win in the conquest phase, which is like the war phase of the game. You can also complete private objectives. And all in all, I love this game because it is so intense. Every single time I play this, I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm fighting for all these victory points. You're having to juggle a lot of different things. I also really love mechanically, you know, this is a deck builder, another deck builder, but it also involves worker placement. So you have to really strategize where you're putting your workers down every single time, you know, how you're building and refining your deck. It's just so intense. And I love that about this game. I feel like the theme, you know, at the end of the day, it is a Euro, but I feel like the theme translates very well. It all is very fitting to the universe and it all makes sense. I think the powers for each of the characters, you know, they're slightly asymmetric. I think those make sense as well. And all in all, I just love this game. It is a game that will be in my collection for indefinitely. I can see, you know, as far as longevity, it just offers so much and it's incredible. If you haven't played it, I fully, fully recommend it. Next up, we have Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid, a cooperative game for two to five players where you're taking control of your favorite ranger and you're working to defeat baddies like the Nasty Knights, Bones, and of course, Rita Repulsa. Now, I went on a nostalgia trip recently. I've been binging all the old Power Rangers, absolutely loving it. And of course, I had to look up what Power Rangers games there were. I came across this one, I bought it, played it, and it's really, really good. Now, of course, the theme does elevate this a little bit for me, so I have to be transparent with that, but I actually really like the core gameplay of this game. So on your turn, you can only do three things. You can move your ranger, you can initiate a battle, or you can recover your ranger, which is basically uh, adding cards that you've discarded and putting them back into your deck. So very straightforward. I feel like that's super easy to grasp but there is a lot more strategy than you might initially think when you're playing the game. So at the four locations that come in the core set, there's going to be a deployment phase where you will spawn enemies. And then anytime you initiate a battle for each enemy at that location that you're choosing to fight, you're going to flip a card. And those cards basically represent, represent those enemies. And then you, uh, as the rangers, will take alternating turns between you and the enemy trying to defeat these cards. So it's a very simplistic gameplay loop, but there's a lot of strategy. So some of these cards are gonna have keywords like guard. And anytime you see the guard keyword, the cards to the left, right, above, or below are guarded. That means you cannot attack them. You have to focus and get rid of that guard card. There's also the fast keyword. So anytime you have a fast card, you put it to the front of the row, and that means the enemies are going to attack you before you can attack them, which can definitely like mess up your strategy when going into the fight. So, you know, there is a lot of intensity in this game too. I feel like I said before, the theme comes through very well, and it's just a really fun, 
good time. It kind of reminds me of like Zombie Side, if you've ever played that, sort of has that beer and pretzels type vibe, but it's super good. And if you are a fan of Power Rangers, I definitely recommend this game. Now I'm kind of cheating on my seventh pick because this is two games. This is Star Wars Rebellion and War of the Ring Second Edition. Now these are, in my opinion, the definitive games that involve any IP that I've played at least. So in their respective games, you're taking control of either the good faction, so the free people or the rebellion, or the evil faction, the shadow or the empire, and you are working to defeat your enemy. So if you're playing Star Wars Rebellion as the rebellion, you are trying to uh, conceal your base and make sure the Empire cannot find it. You're trying to outlast them. And in War of the Ring, as the Fellowship or the Free People, you're trying to escort the Fellowship into Mount Doom and destroy the Ring. Now, I think both of these games are incredible and they achieve something very similar in their respective universes. Every time I play either of these games, it is literally a trilogy in a game. It is so thematic, it is so strategic, so deep, they're difficult to learn, I have to be upfront about that. But if you are willing to put in the time to learn either of these games, you are in for one of the most thematic, one of the most intense, fun gaming experiences that you will ever play. I can promise you that. Uh, my preference, I lean a little bit towards War of the Ring just because I love the Tolkien universe, but I actually play Rebellion quite a bit more just because more of my friends are into Star Wars than Lord of the Rings, but both exceptional games. I really, really enjoy these. And if you have the opportunity and the uh, ability to commit to learning these games, you will not be disappointed. And these are my final two picks. And that wraps up my top seven games that incorporate intellectual properties. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give me a like and a subscribe. And if you hated this video, feel free to roast me in the comments below. This is Jordan here at Totally Bored. We'll see you next time. Na 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 go go power rangers